all. 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 All the different types of particles that exist in nature can also be categorized by their spin value. So there are two types of categories. There are the bosons and the boson particles are those particles that have a spin value that equals to an integer value. For example, 1, 2, 3 and so forth. On the other hand, fermions are those particles that have have a spin value that is equal to half an integer. For example, negative one half, positive one half, three halves, five halves, and so on. Now, both sounds do not need to obey the Pauli exclusion principle. However, fermions must obey the Pauli exclusion principle. For example, the electron is one example of a fermion. The electron can have a spin of negative one half or a positive one half spin. And we know that whenever we have an electron in any given atom, that electron has its own unique quantum state that is designated by the various types of quantum numbers. Now a quark is also considered a fermion because all the six different types of quarks have a spin of one half. So the up and the down, the top and the bottom, and the strange and the charm quarks, all these quarks have a spin of positive one half. And that means by definition the quarks are fermions and so they must obey the Pauli exclusion principle. However, let's suppose we have a baryon, a baryon that consists of three quarks. And these three quarks are all up quarks. So we have U, U, and a U that basically compose the baryon particle. Now each one of these up quarks has its own quantum numbers. Now all these U's have the same exact quantum numbers. We know that any up quark has the same charm quantum number, has the same strangeness, has the same topness, bottomness, has the same spin, has the same lepton numbers, baryon numbers, and so on. And such a combination would mean that all the three quantum numbers are exactly, I, I mean all the quantum numbers for all these three up quarks are exactly the same and that basically means that they must be found in the same exact quantum state which is a contradiction to the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, to resolve this issue about quarks being fermions and not obeying the Pauli exclusion principle, physicists came up with another quantum number. So they say that quarks have yet another quantum property that we call color. So based on this color theory of quarks, each one of the six quarks can have three different colors. So we can have red, green, and and blue. Now the anti-quarks are given the quantum property of anti-color. So anti-red, anti-green, and anti-blue. For example, if the up quark has the red color, the anti or the up anti quark will have the anti red anti color. So this basically means that when we take three quarks and we combine them to form our baryon, each one of those quarks has its own unique color. So in this case, the first U, the first up quark would have the red color, the second one would have the green color, and the third one would have the blue color. And because each one of them have their own unique quantum color, call, quantum number called color, that means they are all found in their own unique quantum state. And that, and, and that means that quarks readily obey the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, 
Now, in the same exact way, we can also form a meson from a quark and an anti-quark pair. And in such a case, let's suppose we're using our up quark and we want to combine that quark with some anti-quark. So we're basically combining a color and an anti-color. Now, whenever we form baryons and whenever we form mesons, the actual color of those uh, baryons and mesons is white. So, for example, let's suppose we have the following baryon. This is a proton. A proton consists of the up quark, the up quark, and the down quark. Now, in this case, the up quark, the first up quark, has the color red, and that means this must have a different color, we're going to say green, and the down quark must have the final color blue. So this means each one of these is found in its own unique quantum state, and this is in accordance with the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, we know that whenever we combine the color red, blue, and green, these are the three primary colors, we form the color white. And that's exactly we say, and that's exactly why we say the proton is the color white. The, pro the proton as a whole has the color white because when these three quarks combine, we combine red, green, and blue, and that forms white. In the same analogous way, mesons also form white colors. Now, in an analogous way that electrons are said to carry electric charge, quarks carry something called color charge. So each one of these colors produces its own color charge. And the strong force, the strong nuclear force, force that quarks feel due to one another between one another is said to be the color force. So in the same same way that electric charge is said to produce the electromagnetic force, the colors have color charge that produce the color force. Now this idea comes from the field known as quantum chromodynamics or QCD. Now quantum chromodynamics tells us that quarks interact with one another via gauge bosons fundamentally fundamental particles known as gluons and these gluons are said to carry this strong nuclear force we also call the color force that exists between the different colors on our quarks. So this Feynman diagram basically describes the way that our down quark that has the blue color and the up quark that has the red color interact with one one another. So basically, as these two quarks approach one another, when they when they get close enough, our out uh, one of these quarks, let's say this quark, releases the gluon, and this gluon carries this strong nuclear force we call the color force. And when it carries this color force, it also carries the color of this particular quark. And so that's exactly exactly why we have an exchange of color. So this down quark used to be blue, but when it released that gluon, that gluon basically released that blue color and basically they exchanged the colors. So this D, this um, uh, down quark, which was blue, now becomes red, and this up quark, which was red, now becomes uh, blue, as shown by this Feynman diagram. So once again, basically every single quark, 